We welcome you to the Lit Lamb program here at the Buena Vista Church of Christ. Uh, David says, uh, thy word is a lamp unto your feet and a light in your pathway. Uh, he says that light is shines in dark place to give you and govern you a unique position of walking in light. I am Edward Hall, the minister of the Buena Vista Church of Christ. We want you to join with us in our study and we hope and pray that you'll be uplifted and build up psychologically in your mental state. Now you need to learn, and I need to learn to forgive ourselves. Things were done in the past. And live that new life that God is setting out for us so we can be able to see the divine image that God set for us. Now, I want you to see something else here. Watch what he does now. He moves from this image where God extends to us this redemption. He forgives us for our sin, but now he moves us to another blessing now. That other blessing is in verse number eight. Now watch verse number eight. Wherein now, coming right off of, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Now there's, there's two things here that he says, wisdom and prudent. Now, the prudency that he gives us is that, number one, he gives us a wisdom not only in secular means, but spiritual means. He teaches us how that we can handle things on the level of the secular as well as the spiritual. And we need that in our world today because, see, once God gives us this new image, this spiritual image, and he uncovered that image, he teaches us how in this real world, how psychologically and not only psychologically, socially and, and practically, we know how to deal with the world from the secular and the spiritual. So every way, every which way we go now, God gives us that dimension now. Now watch what he does here. He says, we're in he hath abound. Now, the word bound means overflowing. Now, what is God doing? He's overflowing something. What is he overflowing? His wisdom. His wisdom. His knowledge. The spiritual uniqueness that he's given to us and put on the inside of us. When we locked ourselves in Jesus, now it abounds towards us in the wisdom and the prudency that he gives us. Now, that's going to stabilize us. That's going to help us in our everyday life now. Watch what he does now. He moves from that wisdom abound towards us, and he moves and he makes known unto us his will because it's his will that he makes known to us that gives us this new dimension now to our spiritual image. Now, look what he says in down in verse number 9, and this has become a part of the, the, the blessing that he has also said in verse number 3 that he extends to us. In this richness. Now look in verse number nine. The Bible says, having made known unto us the mystery. Now the word mystery is mysterion. Mysterion is a unique word because what it does here is show that God can unveil to us something that we have not seen. And we need something to be unveiled when we want to have new direction in our life. So what does God do? He unveils to us this new wheel that God said we can do and we can continue to follow in Jesus. So look at verse number nine. Having made known, Aris participle now, active, meaning that I've got to actively allow myself to get involved. And then I've got to intake this and make sure it comes to completion. And this is going to take trust because, see, out of this, I've got to trust God that it can be done. Now, I cannot think that negatively it can't be done. When I get my new image in God, I've got to know that it can be done only through Jesus. Now, what's the point of the book of Ephesians? It's to show the etern eternal purpose of God. Now, this eternal purpose simply means I've got to accept it and carry this thing through because God does his part. I've got to do my part. Now, watch what he does now. So he says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Now, Jesus has purposed in himself the Thelema, the will of the Father, that goes well back to Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3. This scheme of redemption in chapter 3 and verses number 15, where God had exposed unto us the uniqueness of Jesus coming into our world. And so the scheme of redemption have, have passed down through the stream of time. So it comes to us by Calvary. When Jesus died on Calvary, when he shed his blood on Calvary, he died not just for one individual. He died for the whole world. He made it operative where you and I can have a new spiritual image in Jesus Christ. Now, now watch this here. Now, he says this mystery is of his will, and it's called the Thelema. And it's according to his good pleasure. Note that God's good pleasure, he does everything for his good pleasure. God wants the good of all things to assimilate to us. Now, he says the good pleasure of his will which he purposed in himself. Now, he purposed this. God purposed all things for you and I to have this new dimension. 